Hi guys, welcome to another live stream. We got Ajax, Puppy Mental, Sahabi, of course, regular crew. Uh, it's been a crazy 24 hours. I have to say sorry for being late. Some of us had some technical issues, so I'm not going to mention some name. So, um, Sahabi, what's happening with you, man, with those technical issues? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Thanks every, a lot. Every week, bro. Every week. What's, what, what's up with the mic? Where bro. did you buy the mic? Bro. Don't let me get into this, man. Let, don't let me get, don't let me get into this because it's. Uh... We all have no, issues. Man. I know. I know. Huh? We all have issues. Um, guys, welcome and thank you for being on a Friday. Thank you also for the for everyone who's uh, who's watching. So we're gonna make it very easy today. Everybody can drop the questions they want. They can comment on what they want what they want to say, basically, and we will try to do as much as possible. Um, we're gonna talk about Ajax, of course. Haitika has been the coach for three games now. Toughest game was yesterday. Um, I had an opportunity to panel for the first time, which was fun. Um, and I just want European now. I'm back to the old host. So for me, it's all listening to you guys now and also the people in the chat. I just want to start asking the main question of today. And I want to start with Sahbi. Um, Sahbi, look, we've seen Haitika now for three games, right? And um, it seems like we're seeing a different Aya. So the main question for me and all of you also can answer this is what has been the most surprising thing for you since had has stepped up as the coach i think there are more than only one yeah, there are several mm -hmm. but uh, i mean to begin with clarity i mean it's it, everybody got clarity on how the way we want to play uh, there's more confidence more energy he brought more energy into the team uh, the right players in the right positions i think that was one of the most logical decisions uh, made by a normal coach. So I won't talk about further uh, on this one. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, are, we, we uh, there's a winning mentality again. We know how to win games, although we play, we don't play as well as we used to in the past, but we are winning our games and we don't concede uh, uh, goals now uh, anymore. So for me, that was the main those were the main things that 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 Hatika just brought in, literally easy logical choices, and that should should say something about our former uh, coach, right? Yeah. So basically, in your view, what you're saying is, um, are you not discrediting, but are you saying like actually Hatika, yeah, he's doing good, but he's doing the logical things, and that's paying out right now. It's not like he reinvented the squad, basically. Exactly, and and. Yeah, and, and, and I have to add, which I forgot, is he makes the right changes. Substitutions, great. Substituting Tadish all of a sudden, great. I mean, he changes at moments when, when it is needed. Like the game against uh, Twente, Concesao got in, Kudus in, uh, uh, back in the center, bringing in uh, Bassi for some uh, uh, muscles, some, some, for some physics uh, at the back. I mean, those are normally clear and logical decisions, but you still have to do them. And yeah, only praise, only praise for that for now. Only praise, Papimento. Only praise. I'm seeing you like smiling the whole time since Hattie yeah. took home. You even told yeah. me today, like, <laughs> I'm still smiling, man. Johnny, Johnny is making me smile. That was your exact quote. This ain't Papimento. Actually, I said, I said, Johnny is making me ecstatic. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. Sorry. Yeah, that. that's what that's what I said. I'm I'm full of energy because of Johnny Ball. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, it also says a lot about the first six months and how annoyed I was, and I actually kind of like I expired, uh, to be honest, in certain periods. But uh, no, that is uh, fully gone. I see an, my Ajax back. I see an, um, an Ajax legend as a coach. So. Uh, yeah, very good. And I must say, I must agree with Sahwi. For me, the, the best point of Haidinha is his substitution so far. Uh, I don't think he, he tipped his toe anything wrong so far in the three matches he, he coached. So uh, he is doing phenomenal. I'm getting motivated. I'm happy. I'm even considering like leaving Haidinha as the coach after this season. So uh, Why are yeah, you considering? Are you in doubt still? No, not, not doubt, but he's still young and I don't know what he wants, if he wants to continue or become an assistant coach. But if you ask me, he's doing so much things right that uh, I would give him the chance, for sure. All right. Hi, Jets. Um, 
your your view. Do you agree with the panels? Do you have something else to add, maybe, from your perspective? From my perspective, the biggest accomplishment uh, by Heitinga is uh, getting Papimento on ecstatic uh, <laughs> mood, you know, because that is uh, that's something else. But yeah, um, the panel's already covered uh, a lot of things. Um, he's bringing back the Ajax identity also, you know, things that we value most at our club, we see it back in the pitch. Uh, I see combination football again, even though we're playing against an opponent, for example, in the last league win, that parks the bus. So it's difficult. And in the Schroeder, we had a lot of difficulties um, playing ourselves um, out of that situation and creating chances. And now we had a lot of chances and I saw that combination football again. This is the most important thing for me. And he's doing, like, like uh, the guys already said, let's summarize it, like he's doing the easy stuff the right way. You know, and that makes a ton of difference as a coach already, because if you cannot do the easy stuff, the logical stuff the right way, what are you supposed to do with the, the mediocre or let me say the, the more important stuff, you know, the difficult stuff, if you cannot handle the easy stuff. And he's doing that quite well. And uh, yeah, I love what I see, uh, Juan. I hope it continues. Yeah. Do you agree, Ajax? Do you agree also with what Sahbi is saying that it's actually a little bit back to basics, back to Ajax basics? You know, what, what Heidegger, if you hear Heidegger pre match, post match, all the right things he's saying, it's typical Ajax, basically. You can, yeah, you but can hear from him that he's an Ajax guy, he's an Ajax boy. Of, of course. But Juan, uh, you do not have to, um, like, how do you say that? Take this the wrong way because the basics isn't something simple or something wrong. The yeah. IX fundamentals, the IX basics are what we build upon, what we are known from as a club. So if we defer from those basics too much, you lose your identity and, and, and the things you do well and the way you educate the players to handle that first team place when they're ready for it. So going back to the basics is maybe the most important thing and, and the best thing that you can do at the moment. Yeah, and what so are those basics? The things that we are good yeah. at? What are those basics? A little bit also for our viewers uh, in your in your eyes. Also, no, uh, for example, uh, at least play with confidence. Try to 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 play football and not be afraid within the pitch. Have confidence also uh, and show it towards uh, the opponents. You know, a lot of games in the past decades were already won in the tunnels, seeing like the the moxie, you know, the bravoure that Ajax is known for. You could see that already back on, on the pitch again a little bit and also fighting for each other and playing as a team. That is uh, that are our most important things. And passing plays back, you know, uh, if you, uh, okay, Papimento dubbed it like long ball, you know, long ball football under Schroeder. It was not only long balls, but the, the amount of long balls that we saw under Schroeder was baffling. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to play football again. And those are, yeah, the passing play, you know, the movement around the pitch, technical players doing nice stuff. That is what you want to see at Ajax. Yeah, absolutely. May I add, by the way, that not only the players are looking more sharp, but you look sharp as well today. Exactly. With your new haircut. Just yeah. want to put it out there. I, I, had, I, had to get a fresh, I had to get a fresh cut again because yeah, I was man, I just feel like a hobo. So, uh, yeah, I just so realized. Realize. No, no. It, I just, it, was, it, it feels like nice. a Taylor haircut. Is, is there yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> hey, uh, Ajax, I'm, I'm sticking with you just for this one, but we'll make a round. So let's talk about the players. Um, any players you want to highlight in this new uh, Heitinga era, basically, that stood out for you? Or is it more for you a collective thing? How do you see it? It's a collective thing, but it's also, um, you know, what you instill in the team as a coach. You instill certain values within the players and uh, that you ha have in high regard for your team and for your club. And this is the most important thing. But the players that stood out for me at the moment, uh, Kudus. Kudus is for me uh, number one that, that stood out the most. Um, Berghuis is playing very well. Tadis is playing decently as a striker again. But uh, first and foremost, Kudus is so important for us. And we saw it last game. He played every position this season that you could almost play. You know, uh, false, false nine as a striker. Um, he's playing as a right winger now with a lot of uh, creative freedom there and also as a 10, the last 30 minutes in the match, forcing that goal uh, with a great combination with uh, Konsesao and Tadic. And uh, there were a lot of haters this season on Kudus. And Not only this season. Almost, all those haters are quiet. You don't hear them anymore. They were, they're, they're going back under their rocks, you know. Uh, they were like, sell him. And, and we were already 
you're, you're easily uh, dubbed a fanboy if you see something positive in a player. But we were already saying this for, for two years now that he's a great player and one of the better players at Ajax. He was just very unfortunate to have that many injuries and coaches that choose for other players because under Ten Hag, he was not that high in the pecking order anymore because of those injuries. Other right. players were yeah, used earlier than him. Yeah. But you can see now that he's the, one of the most pivotal players that can bring something else than, than the other players in the in the pitch. So for me, it's kudos. 100%. Okay, Fabi, you do you agree, or is there anything else you want to like highlight which maybe surprised you from Hatiha in these three games in terms of the players well, that he selected? Well, not specific Hatiha, but if you look at the players, I mean, what 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 Ajax said perfectly uh, makes sense. But I forgot one name. That's Rui. Yeah. That that the goalie that he is something else. He he helped us so much uh, with his saves. He brings calmness at the back. Uh, he has those nice crosses uh, as well. And he, yeah, it's not like shooting the ball when he's uh, under pressure. Total calmness brings confidence to the uh, to the back. I mean, is it is a there lot. a big difference for you, Sahbi, between Posfer and Rui? I think in. Uh, uh, Pasfer uh, at his best uh, when he made those 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 like the, those cat moves when uh, when saving the ball that reminds me on how Rui is doing right now. I mean, okay. if you see his saves, uh, it's it's uh, in incredible. Uh, almost one hundred percent goals. He, so he grabs them like it's nothing. So can I translate it? Please correct me, but can I translate it like Pasfer's top level? Is Ruli's usual level? Is that what you're saying? From what I'm seeing right now, because yeah. I don't want to downgrade Pasfer. I mean, of he's course. a great keeper. Yeah. But of course, he's uh, he's only decline. He will only decline. So Rui is the perfect replacement uh, for him, 100%. Yeah, uh, Papi, I want to go with you. Um, I don't know if you want you have the same players, but if you don't, what about the wing backs and Alvarez putting Alvarez or keeping Alvarez at the back? What about that? What's your view on that? My view is that it's uh, that Edson does well any anywhere you put him just because of his winner mentality and I think his development is amazing at Ajax so far. Uh, he has gotten much better on the ball uh, than we give him credit for and I think he's very calm on the ball even from the back. So that's good. I just think um, in transition we're still weak and the Taylor and Edson uh, combination CDM CB is kind of uh, still, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable. Yeah, point of concern. I would say, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, like, we're gonna see it against Union Berlin, for instance. Those have very fast players up front, and I think uh, that's gonna show us our our weaknesses. And the weaknesses will be uh, the Edson uh, Taylor, I think, uh, combination. Yeah. Um, coming back, you know, Randall. I think he's doing well under Heidegger. Uh, didn't play so much under uh, Schroeder. Now he's doing, he's playing and he's doing well. So uh, that's surprising. I think we look stable. I think the team knows what they want to do. Like they need, like for instance, we, we say it's all easy things what Heidegger is doing, right? It's all basic. But I was reading today an article on Ocampos that was doing individual training, and the coach didn't even tell him why he was doing individual training. So uh, maybe Heitinga is more direct and says it to the player how he wants it. And uh, from there, a lot of problems uh, are negated. But uh, I'm, I'm really happy uh, with Heitinga and I give him a lot of credit. And I saw also somebody asking here. Yeah, let's go. Know, let's some, some comments. Let's, some let's questions. See. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but somebody asked, like, if, if Heitinga won the league and the Europa League, uh, would you keep him as a manager? I would do it if he only wins the league already. So for is me, that a serious question? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Would anyone say no? Honestly. I would give him a 10-year contract. Or well, the only contract. Thing, well, the only thing I have to say, though, um, if we think about the hierarchy, I think, Sabi, we touched upon that last week, uh, they're about to appoint a technical director. You know, So it also depends if the technical director agrees to keep Heidegger. But I cannot believe that you would you know, just put Hedgeha on the, you know, as an assistant after he him winning the Europa League yeah. and the league. So you can't yeah. justify. You can't justify that. Yeah. So this was the question. Yeah, if we win the league, I would already give it to Hedgeha because 
I still think our team is imbalanced, missing some key players in some key positions. So uh, if he gets the league this season, that would be very good from uh, his point of view. Touching about uh, about that, you know, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the same, Papimento. Um, what do you guys think of the fact that we've heard in this first six months, right? Also Schroeder, but also Van der Sar, even at the Ziggo uh, interview this week, which we will touch upon a bit later. Um, this argument, you're hearing it a lot, also from the players, that we, we sold 12 players, 11 players, 13 players. Um, you know, the, the team is a little bit imbalanced. Um, these kind of things. We never sold so many players before. All facts, you know? But still, you see the difference, what a coach can bring. There's a There's a... Honestly, if you look at Schroeder team and Heitegaard's team right now, even after three games, with the same players. We don't have new players. They're the same players. Maybe Rui is an exception, but we have basically the same players, guys. Yeah, so but a different starting 11. And I feel now we have a starting 11 in which most of the top tier players are playing. Yeah, but my point is more, my point is more, um, we still have the same squad. Even though you're making different choices, we have the same squad. So it's yeah. not all, always looking at maybe our team needs to grow, maybe our team is imbalanced, but maybe the choices have to be different. Don't you guys agree with this? Or am I being a bit too harsh on uh, on the whole situation? What do you think, Ajax? I think, um, I think what you're saying does make some sense, but I think you do not have, you do not have to underestimate what a difference it makes uh, between a mediocre coach, an average coach, and a great coach. And these differences between the skill set of those coaches can make a world of difference um, to translate that to the pitch and to the players. Yeah. And I'm not saying already that Heitinga is a world-class coach, but I do say this now that Schroeder was a terrible coach. So already <laughs> the difference between terrible and maybe average or maybe more than average that we should see the coming six months yeah. is already a big, big difference. And I think you do not have to underestimate what kind of influence that has on the team and, and, and on the play that is shown on the pitch. And definitely, if you have a team that you lost in the locker room, you know, if you lose the locker room as a coach, that's even worse. And I think that was uh, the case with, with Schroeder. Yeah, I, think, I think that is the, the latter one. That's basically what it is. Schroeder doesn't even know what to do. If you ask your players what to do in the second half, that should say enough. I mean, Hadiha is straightforward. We do this, we do that. We need to play the Ajax way. You go out, you go in. We need to play inverted and so on and so on. Schroeder is, li is like, okay, it's still nil-nil or, st or one behind. Okay, guys, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? It's the other way around. I mean... Okay. Can we, like, looking back now and reflect, uh, we don't know all the ins and outs, but we know enough. I mean, we read a lot, we heard a yeah. lot. Isn't it, like, the case, it's clear-cut, basically, that Schroeder maybe should focus on staying as an assistant? He's more an assistant kind of That's person? What I said. Yeah, but, That's but what it, I also, said. it also has to do with mentality, uh, Juan. Let me give you some examples. Mm -hmm. uh, Schroeder, doesn't matter which match he played, even if, if we got slaughtered by Napoli, it was all rainbows and unicorns with him. He saw good things, terrific things, you know? <laughs> and with, with Heitinga, he's instilling a certain mentality within the squad. I will give you two examples. A foremost, a first, is uh, after the game against Cambuur, 0-5, he had some negative notes still to tell uh, um, after uh, giving the interviews after the match. We yeah. saw that also with Erik ten Hag. After we won against Dortmund, he still had some remarks what could have done better. This says something about the mentality. First is a coach that's dropping points every week and only talks about the, that he saw good stuff instead of being like a little bit uh, critical on himself and on the team, you know? Yeah. And uh, other difference is that I heard him talk about that he doesn't <laughs> allow mobile phones in certain areas anymore yeah. within the, uh, the club, but not only for the players, but also for the staff. These little things tell me that he has eye for detail. And not, only that, not only that, Ajax, they also have to fill out a form now, a readiness form, in yeah. which they basically tell through the form how they feel. Yeah. And this, this is also good because instead of 
stating that you want to know the player behind the player or the human behind the player, like uh, like uh, Alfred said, you know, <laughs> it's maybe better to have like this routine that the player can um, like fill it out themselves, and then maybe the mental coach or somebody can help them if they are not feeling bad. So Hatika doesn't have to do it and can focus on the important stuff, you know. Well, so the, but those things are the, my main reasons. Yeah, uh, in in difference between those. I just wanted to highlight. Uh, I think Pavimento said it to me today. A bilateral. Uh, he told me one on one, like uh, the same thing about you know. Sure, there was always trying to find out who is the guy behind the guy, you know. <laughs> but reading the Ocampos interview today, I don't know if you guys ca caught up on that. Uh, <laughs> Ocampos didn't know anything about what's going on at Ajax, so nobody talked to him. Ridiculous, man! So it's crazy, man. How how things went. Um, Let's continue yeah. with the comments. I have some questions, man. Yeah, I want to give it to you, Papi. Uh, I think you already yeah. highlighted one from Rita. I want to give it to yeah. Sabi, but I have a question for Rita as well, because every time we start the live stream the last few weeks, she's always complaining, let me put it that way, that she has school, she cannot watch it live. So where is she from? I mean, where does she go? To, in which country is she going to school? Just out of curiosity. Um, so yeah, read up, the, read up the question and Sabi take it from there. Hey, Rita, thanks for your comment. Uh, Rita Shahi, do you agree what Twente coach said after the game? The lucky team <laughs> win today, not the better team. Ron Jans. Yeah, Ron Jans. Yeah, Ron Jans. Yeah, yeah, Ron Jans. No, no, not at all. I mean, it was a hard-fought game. It could, it could have gone uh, both ways. But uh, there were moments where Twente really pressured us and that was at the start of the second half like the the, the 50th or 50 uh fifth minute and that was all, that was going on for like 10 minutes 15 minutes tops where they didn't even create real big chances it was merely pressuring us and trying to push us uh, backwards um and that's basically it and, and 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 i have to be fair i didn't do a lot as well especially in the first half but in the second half they got tired, and if you get tired, you always lean back, and you uh, 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 the second balls are always then for the uh, for the opponent, and that's what basically went during the second half. So I don't think it was luck. I think we were we were the better team uh, at the end of the at the end of the game. So it was it was uh, deserved, hard fought, but deserved. Yeah, we edged it basically. Basically. Yeah, I mean it's all about fitness and 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 also. Uh, experience as well. I mean, yeah. we got some experienced players uh, uh, playing at Ajax. Uh, they I have think, a quite young team. Yeah, I think Sahabi also what maybe made made a difference. I didn't say that yesterday, but in my, when I was paneling, uh, or I didn't make a clear uh, remark about this, but uh, Heidegger could bring Concesao, could bring Bassi, could make those uh, bench, you know, impulses. With, whereas I don't think Twente had the same you know, in, the, in those terms. Oh, that's true. But take into account, they were unbeaten how many games? Uh, 19 games? Home games unbeaten? Uh, this season, their, they were unbeaten. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, this season, maybe, yeah. At their, at their home turf. So, yeah. I mean, the, uh, it's... it's it's uh, Normally, you would say you uh, they won't... They, they will remain undefeated at, at home, especially if you look at the form of Ajax. We just won two games, but we still had to go with the new coach and so on. But it was it was a great result. Um, one nil, not considered a goal again. Uh, Tadic on fire, Kudus on fire, Rui on fire. I mean, and and, and it can only get better. Eh? True, that's the thing. It can yeah. only get better. So yeah, I'm uh, quite uh, ecstatic. <laughs> good, good. Very good. Next Very question good. from Bart Koopman. He tuned in a little later, so it's. He doesn't know if it's already discussed, but I don't think so. What do you guys think about the performance of Rudy and also his influence on the build-up play from the back? We discussed it a bit. A yeah, we discussed it briefly. I think Sahbi already mentioned it. Maybe Sahbi can give like one sentence on what he said. That will be um, difficult for Sahbi, uh, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I'll keep. I will keep it short. No, I mean, I, I love him. I love him. He's one of the highlights uh, uh, for us. He brings calmness and 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 uh, distribution of the ball is great. Crosses are, are great. And he makes saves which you can consider 100% goals. So great, great. Don't okay, distract him, Ajax. Don't distract him. It was no, let him, let him go. He has it smooth. He's, he's smooth today. So uh, yeah, yeah remove your, your head, bro. Remove your head. <laughs> uh, let's let's continue. With the, I want to continue with all the comments. So we give the time to, yeah. to our viewers. See when you see 
Thanks for coming, bro. How's the feeling now towards the Union Berlin game? What do you think? What do you think, Papi? Yeah, Go ahead. For me, uh, I'm I'm still hesitant. I mean, you saw when we got pressed by Twente, when we got pressed against Feyenoord, uh, that it caused a lot of problems in our in our play. I think we're we're developing, but I think they are a level higher, in a better competition. So um, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be an easy game. I don't expect it to be an easy game. We can still win, but uh, we have to be 100% on point. Uh, no miss passing like Timber did yesterday to Edson. Like Absolutely. those kind of mistakes can can destroy the whole uh, game for us. So uh, they're very sneaky, very fast, and uh, one chance is one goal. Not like Twente that need a couple. Yeah, and I think we should be careful with the set pieces as well. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so not not our strong suit at Ajax either. So uh, let me continue with the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Maybe we can continue. Oh, there was somebody that asked about the Van der Sar interview. Uh, yeah, the road, we can touch upon it right now. While you That's while crazy. you look for it, we can start about it right now. Let me let me start with Ajax with this. So on Monday, for our viewers. Um, the the sponsor basically Ziggo a channel here in Holland uh, they have a program in which they talk football with some old football players for Hulid from Boston etc uh, from the start was invited so naturally after this season first time actually I think this season he came you know on public television and started talking and um, well he had some explains to do a couple of questions came his uh, to to him. And he had to explain the season, what happened, um, why Schroeder was fired, uh, why not earlier. So all these questions that the fans, a lot of fans had as well, he had to he had to answer. So, look, uh, I want all three of you basically to answer this, but I will start with Ajax. What do you think of the interview? Uh, what stood out for you basically, Ajax? Yeah, what stood out for me? Great question. Um, I think he, for Van der Sar's standards, he did okay-ish. Um, with Van der Sar, it's also saying a lot of things, but not saying a lot of things, you know. So a lot of words, but not so many things that you can think, okay, that's a clear opinion. But I think he gave some okay answers during the interview that gave some clarification. So uh, that he did well. Um, but I'm still, you know, it's, uh, he still looks for me a little bit dodgy, you know, like dodging his responsibilities and, and what he did wrong. He did say he would not give himself a sufficient grade if he had to rate himself. Yeah. So that is actually kind of a being a little bit, you know, to reflect on your own performance. And he said that he they, they then he spoke in the we form, you know, could have handled uh, the departure of Blind better in which I agree. So there were some um, critical notes to watch his own performance also. But it's also um, very hard to watch him, you know. It's like somebody who's not comfortable. You know, it's like like seeing a fish on dry land. It's not his natural habitat and it's, it's, it's difficult to watch that. But maybe in, 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 a, in a good structure, in a certain form within the club, if he has the right people around him, he could um, maybe flourish still as a CEO, but more as somebody who uh, deals with sponsor deals, commercial things, you know, being the face of the club towards other clubs and other uh, high profile figures within the football world because he has that stature. But technical part, uh, I wish he stays away from that like far and not, um, not, not puts his finger in, in, in the pot to, to stir it and has his own opinion with it uh, yeah. because that doesn't go well. Uh, let me ask you a question, Ajax, um, which actually, because of what you're saying, it triggered me a little bit. Do you think, do you feel like a CEO in general? I mean, we know that Van der Sar is a legend. No, no doubt about that. You know, he, uh, what he meant to Ajax, what he means to Ajax. And we have to also, one more thing that I realized during that interview is that I was looking at Gullit and I was looking at Van Basten and the only thing they do is golf and have a social life. And we have at least somebody that is putting, you know, effort into the club. So to a certain extent, I admire that from Van der Sar. But my question is, is it is it normal to have a CEO who's not very communicative, who's not very strong in communication? Yeah. To me, it's, it's, it's a bit 
a mixed feeling. What do you think about that? I agree. I agree. And I think I've touched upon this in, in previous talk on the channel. Um, when Overmars left the club and also in certain extent Erik ten Hag left the club, um, some of his liabilities got exposed because Overmars was usually the one uh, doing interviews and doing public stuff. While actually, I think it's more of a, you know, trade that, that the CEO needs to have and needs to do. So with Overmars leaving, Van der Sar had to rely more on himself. And also, I can remember Erik ten Hag, also with the Overmars scandal, he was, uh, I believe, the first one to get interviewed about this situation and handling the pressure as yeah. a head coach. Yes. And even with Ten Hag being awkward towards the press a bit, you know, his, his behavior, his oh, mentality, yeah. his like personality, he still does it and, and he doesn't um, avoid it. He just dives in, even yeah. in his awkward way, but he is communicative and he is stern and he knows what he wants to say. No yeah. Switzerland answers like from the Sardas. And even then, with that scandal, where was Van der Sar? And with also, like, um, Ten Hag leaving and then Schroeder coming in, getting a lot of heat, he wasn't the person for Van der Sar to cover that up. So now he has to do it. And it's so awkward when he does it. So Actually, this is just I not his he, cup he of was, tea. I thought, uh, at Rondo, he was, the first time I thought he was pretty good, like, uh, first time giving straight answers. He thought about the questions. He knew what he had to say. But uh, if you look at when Schroeder got sacked, that press conference, uh, yeah, that I couldn't yeah. watch it. You uh, know what's the difference, really, uh, in my opinion, uh, Papi? Sicho is the head sponsor of, you know, Ajax. Uh, it yeah. was on Sicho Sport. He had time to prepare. And I didn't think most of the people at the table were too critical towards him. A little bit sometimes, but I think he had his time to prepare on the on the topics. But that the questions come the, at the table. Yeah, but prepare. Yeah, that's why you do. can prepare. But the do. questions were pretty rough from Vizca. Mm. He, he wasn't shy. They were rough. I think, from the tough I think the, the 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 presenter was mo maybe the most rough one, but yeah. the other footballers at the table were. Very nice to him. Yeah, Even Kullet he says expected. he's doing a great job and giving in a seven and a half or something. Yeah. He could have expected. He could have expected these kind of questions. So exactly. it's not something that uh, it's it's not rocket science. I mean, he knew these type of questions would come in. Uh, but for me, it was he was okay. I mean, he gave an okay uh, interview, but not agreeing with what he said. So that's but did something he, different. Guys, did he take away... But he denied also a lot of things, right? But did he take away the doubts, the criticism that was on him, upon him? Um, once things went very bad, we had to sack Schroeder, all these kind of things. Are you guys no. now, uh, after what happened, now we have Heitinga. Uh, so they made a choice for Heitinga right now. And we saw him in Ziggo Rondo program. So is, is everything fixed for you guys? That's basically also the, the question start, no. behind the question. No, you know what I did have after that interview? I felt sorry a bit for him. But at the other hand, at the same time, I was like, a lot of the shit that you are in now and that I feel sorry for is something that you got yourself into also. Like? You know? like, like, like what? Like saying... It's not anything different than Ofmas does. I get the final say, I get the, the video footage and have to make a decision. You want to have that responsibility to, to, to yeah. make that co-decision and that final decision, but it's not your cup of tea. It's not his expertise. The yeah. CEO stuff he, with Kingsbury, he was educated for this role. But maybe, maybe he was relying, yeah, maybe he was relying um, on, maybe it is the same. Maybe he was relying on Overmars and, and the team, you know, the technical team, so the scouting, etc. And maybe they did a better job than Hamstra and yeah, Huntla. But... No, but wait a minute. And because he gets the end, basically the end package. He gets the end package, that's what he said. And then he looks at the footages, the data that are collected. And then, of course, he is the final say towards it. But he said it's not different than Overmars. So maybe from a distance, I mean, he's making the final call, and there is no difference. But if there is a difference now between what we're seeing and the players that are, you know, being um, 
you know, signed and what happened with Overmars, maybe it's a technical director basically role. No. Yeah, but that's the thing, Juan. He needs to understand that the technical director part and that that, that role is necessary. Yeah. You know, it isn't anything different than Overmars did with yeah. the final say and making the decision. But Overmars had years of experience in it, grew in his role and had yeah. the expertise to make those decisions. Yeah. So, so when Star you... has years of expertise now, first alongside his mentor Kingsberger, and now solely to be a CEO. Yeah, but I understand. These, but these things that he has to co um handle now and maybe make the final decision it's not his cup of tea so what i was trying to say yes i felt a bit sorry for him because i think he's getting a lot of shit also for me also for other fans uh, and on, on social media him saying that he works 70 80 hours a week i believe he he tries to do well for the club but i think his ego stands in his way also and the reason that he needs so many hours in a week is because he needs to do stuff that he isn't used to do so it's difficult for him and yeah. come on, guys! It's it's. I mean, it's I ridiculous wanna... that you need to go on holiday when 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 it's so bad when it goes so bad. I mean, yeah. it's it's almost literally the club is on fire and he goes on holiday for three weeks or how many weeks? I mean, what does that say about the responsibility? Yeah, I just want to I just want to comment before I go to you, puppy, and we go on the comments as well. Uh, so have a look at the comments already. Um, I just I wanted to say also and agree with you on the part that you say like. He made he dig his own not dig his own grave, but he made the whole situation. He had a very big say in where we are today, because in terms of the signings, which we're talking about right now, he was of course the one that also wanted Hamstra and Huntela. You know, you know uh, what you can like um, compare it with Juan. It's like having a good friend, you know, and seeing that friend is in trouble and trying to help him and trying to avoid that person making a certain decision because it will result in something, then that person just decides differently. And you feel sad for the person that he is in that certain situation. But at the same time, you're like, you got yourself into it. And that's yeah. the same with Van der Sar. He is not digging his own grave. He's taking responsibilities to, on him that he doesn't know how to do. So yes, I feel sorry for him. But at the same time, his ego shouldn't have stand in his way. He should have had time to assemble a team around him that could help him with the stuff that he isn't comfortable with. Okay, but how much of, uh, I want to ask this to all of you now, and I want everybody to react on this. How much can we blame, uh, because we're talking only about Van der Sar, and he went to uh, Rondo, and he has his deficiencies, and a lot of things we spoke about earlier. How much can we look at the supervisory board, the RVC? Because they are, they are the ones that are supposed to appoint a technical director. And we're not, uh, the, I mean, honestly, I feel sometimes we deflect too much on from their SAR that we're not really looking at the board. What do you guys think about that? Sabi, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, go sorry, I, was, I was gone. I was, uh, I was gone a bit. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Okay, puppy. No, no, so. la, la, shall I take it first? It is sure. Yeah, it's sure, go ahead. Uh, from the SAR just had to say, if the, if the board of directors doesn't do their job, they are uh, mainly responsible for the technical director. He should have said, Guys, this is not my cup of tea. I do not want to be responsible to have the final say in this. So make sure that you guys are doing your job and find that director within the coming weeks. I will do my utmost to help out Huntelaar and, uh, and, and Hamstra. But this, is some, this isn't something that I want to do like permanently or for a longer period. Yeah. So either he stepped up towards the, the FSA and said, I can do it. Or he just didn't have the backbone uh, to, to tell them, no, it's your responsibility. Make sure that you do it soon. Either way, or he doesn't have the backbone or he overestimates himself. You, you, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to I get understand. at? I understand. He still has a role in this. That's what you're saying, basically. Yeah. Sorry? You st he still has a role in this. Yeah. Thing. So, yeah. And, and that's the thing. I feel sad. But you also have to take responsibility for your role. And maybe he does that because he doesn't give himself a sufficient grade mm -hmm. for the season. So maybe that's his way of saying I fucked up with in certain areas. I don't know because his answers aren't that clear. Yeah. Okay. But that's my opinion, at least. Puppy, go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to respond on, on the question to Van der Sar. Who was in charge of the transfers this past year? He responds with, let me say I'm not a technical director. Technical part is with Hamstra and Huntlar. Once a player is selected, I'll get footages and data and decide 
no different than Overmars. Yeah, exactly. When, when I read that, that was the only thing I am like, okay, there is a point of criticism I can give you. First of all, you're an old legend. You've played the game all your life. What footages from Sanchez did you see that it told you it could be an Ajax player? Seriously, I just want to see the footage. Because you, you cannot tell me that Gerry Hamstra and Guntelaar saw footages from him and decided to bring it to Van der Sar to approve. And even Van der Sar was like, man, this guy can play. This guy so has the ball all over. But, but in all seriousness, back yeah. in the days when we played indoor soccer, you know, uh, uh, if they would show some footage of a season of us, you could also make a highlight reel and think, "Damn, yeah, could have played at Ajax. This, uh, this player, not, this player yeah, is well, quite. I don't good. know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, when they, the only thing I could say, if they if they had footages of me taking penalties, maybe I have a chance, right, Sahbi? I witness. I witness. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I agree. Honestly, yeah, we don't know. I mean. Uh, a lot of a lot of signings, honestly, you could put a question mark behind it. So the process seems maybe logical, but there are holes. There are things not going well, so it has to be looked at. But we all know now, you know, there's maybe a new technical director to be appointed within two months, which he said also in Rondo. So that's that's a good thing because Positive, we know there, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's going to be clarity on that. Um, I think we talked a lot, guys. Um, I really have to give it now to the to the viewers. So. Any questions they have or remarks, just let it know. Yeah, I have a question, but it's in Dutch. Do you mind me translating? Sure, we translate it. It's fine. Quincy, thanks for the comment, buddy. Thank you, Yuri. That's great. Uh, do you guys think that Schroeder is the minced love trainer ever at I? The minced is Danglish, bro. It's, it's Danglish. The least likable. The least likable? Is that least likable? The least likable? Yeah, the least likable. The least loved. Least loved. Yeah. Least loved. Coach? Okay. Is he is he the least loved? Yeah, he's one of the the least loved in my book. Um. Yeah, I for me, think, I have to say it's still I, fresh. So for me, Schroeder is on top of that list. You know, if you compare it, for example, to Kaiser, that was also very short at the helm of the club. I didn't have those feelings with Kaiser. No, not at all. I not mean, close. Not even not close. Not even close. For me, Schroeder is more on the hate side than on the love side. So. It's for me, it's quite clear. The thing is, the thing is, I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking about the coaches that didn't do well. So about Kaiser, my opinion, just quickly. Kaiser, I think, uh, I mean, I remember when he got sacked, I was a bit surprised, to be honest. Yeah. Um, that was my initial reaction. We didn't do well, you know? It was like ups and downs, but I was shocked that he got fired. So um, this is the other way around. We were hoping yeah. further got you know, to be fired a month ago. But let's be honest, you know, we have to appreciate uh, uh, Kaiser also because the level of baldness was still growing, you know, during the years. It was baldy after baldy after baldy. So, yeah, He's man, I, I, I had to was, love yeah. that. Yeah. And and uh, I think I think maybe Joel, maybe Joel, I remember at the end, people were done with Joel as well. You know? Yeah, people didn't like that was, uh, Talking about long balls. Him. Talking about long balls. That yeah, was but, long balls. But it has to, had, to do with the, had to do with the signings of Joel also, man. Those were ridiculous. Wasn't he the one who brought in Ursais and Mi he brought Mido? He brought Mido back, I believe. Atuba, Atuba, Atuba. Atuba yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. That was crazy. Man, yeah, that guy looked like a retired forty-five-year-old. What the fuck, man? And so, wasn't Sanogo from his uh, Sanogo from his uh, side also? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't I remember so. that. Yeah, these kind of signings. That was horrible. As well. Anyway, we have also a United fan that is scouting for Timber. I'm a United <laughs> fan, Mike Cramon, and looking at Timber, but Mike, who do I want? Uh, always scouting for 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 our players, those United. Uh, okay, uh, look, see. look, very easy. We'll make it very easy for all the United fans that are watching, or we'll watch later. We'll make it trade, right? If you guys want Timber, he's been with us for some time. You guys can buy him for a good price, but we want uh, Zidane Iqbal. That's the trade. Oh, oh, that would be all nice. right. All right. Let me know you no, do. no, we do not want Harry Maguire. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, this one is a little tough, but we want to take the switch formation. We should be play against Union Berlin. Would you guys keep it the same? Never change a winning team. That's yeah. Do you guys think also. Taylor can hold his own on a CDM? In no, I think maybe he'll. I think maybe he'll make a change there. I think so. 
Yeah, he might. He will, play, I best. Do that. He will I play best. Do that. He a central defender, and then uh, move Alfres one spot up. It wouldn't surprise me if he does. Uh, is, Gre uh, is Grealish already fit, or no, man? Forget about Grealish. Everybody is talking about yeah. Grealish. He Stop didn't it, even see him play Stop once. It. I'm sorry. Haven't seen him play once. But... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, why all of a sudden Grealish will appear out of hey, nowhere? Hey, hey, don't don't shoot the messenger. You know, I I was the one together with Sahbi telling let, let's put Alvarez on the central defense position, and I believe Papi was against it, and he's already a bit a bit a bit like mild now. You know, he's like toning it down. I'm a not bit. mild. So, yeah, so yeah guys, okay, but let's be... You're, let's you're be a teddy bear, you're a teddy bear nowadays. Yeah, okay, it's going well, guys, but let's... There are fine margins here, right? I mean, we saw the Excelsior game. He was struggling there, and that's not only because of him, because of the positional play of the other players, but we saw a couple counters, and he was struggling with that. Yesterday, Timber brought him in a situation. He could not repair that. So if we get into a situation that we get a counter, and Alvarez is the one, the last guy to defend, we're in a big trouble. Don't forget, if the player would have uh, gone down yesterday, it could have been a red card. It could have been a penalty. True. Would have yeah. changed the whole game. I, I agree, but I do see some difference already in how they position themselves in certain um, periods of the play. Because usually, uh, when we move up the pitch, you usually have a line that the players are standing in. And a few times, I saw Alfred like way deep on his own half. While the other players were up a little bit, and I know in transition you can get caught, but him standing deeper than the other defenders that move up the pitch says something about the tactics the coach is playing. Because with that buffer he's building in, he wants to have more reaction time for Alfres to cope with maybe a quick counter or something. Yeah, so that's I, different than in, in other matches. Yeah, and, and to add to that, I also mentioned this yesterday. I think the other tactical thing that you're seeing from Heitinga is that because he's playing Taylor as a CDM, he's instructing the wing backs to be more careful going forward. It's much more balanced compared to what we've seen before. So in that sense, maybe I do agree with Sahbi and maybe he will keep it the same. Uh, but then the tacticals are a little bit, you know, yeah. like more reserved for the wing backs. Yeah. I would play also with a double pivot uh, and not only with one CDM. Just put some some defensive security stability in midfield because that's who, what's lacking who now. Pick? Who would you pick then? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, uh, uh, I have I've said I would play the same eleven. So then it it, it will be Berghas who needs to be who needs to help out uh, Taylor a bit more instead okay. of helping out the number ten, helping out more the number six because that's. Uh, I mean, we all know Taylor. Taylor is more a footballer than a, a, def than a defensive midfielder. Yeah. But it's all about discipline, um, uh, 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 cutting the passing lines, um, uh, run along with your uh, direct opponent, and so on. It's something that needs to develop and needs to gel. So he needs somebody uh, at his side who can help him out. I yeah. mean... As I said, I would have loved to have Alvarez in, in, in CDM, but then we need to have a footballing defender, center back, uh, uh, at the back next to Timber. We don't have that kind of player. What so about it's it's all about choices? What about because we know from Union Berlin that they're very good in set pieces as well. So we know that Alvarez is a must to have, you know, defensively set pieces. Yeah. But then my question would be, uh, and maybe Hadeja will maybe uh, consider or think about that. Should we add Bessie to that to have more defensive security in the set pieces or not? You know, this might sound this might sound very weird and definitely not something to like try out in a Union Berlin game. But if you want that height in the back, you could even opt for Bessie and Alvarez as central defenders and move Timber as that pivot role uh, in the midfield. But it isn't the game to try that mm -hmm. out, in my opinion. You no. will have the height in the defense for certain uh, matches, and Timber could bring that defensive-minded play at that position. He can pass quite well, but you would sacrifice also his position in the defense. So it's always a little bit of a difficult choice. I, I wouldn't do that, uh, no? to be honest, no, because no. You, will kill, you will kill the football from the back, and I think Union Berlin is going to sit deep, especially next week when they play, yeah, yeah, yeah. They play oh, here. Sure. So I don't think that's honestly... I mean, it's not a wild idea, but I don't think that's something we would... Yeah, well, like I said, it's not something that you should test in, in no, a new game. Not. But yeah. he does have some of those traits that can be used at that midfield position. 
Yeah. And I cannot think of another player yeah. that maybe can move up to that spot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hadiga plays in his strengths. He, tr he tries to play his team in, uh, by their strengths. So he won't put a lot of risks or defensive stability at the back only to cover those set pieces. He only thinks attacking-wise. And also, and, and also when you hear his post-match interview like yesterday, he's saying we have to make better choices when we have the ball. So in that sense, I think he, he still wants to give Taylor... I mean, I'm talking about Taylor now. There are more, you know, like Berghuis, Taylor, these kind of midfielders. I think he's talking about them and also me in the build-up phase. So I think he wants to keep them and give them confidence to make better decisions. Yeah. And it's and sorry to interrupt. It's all about... Yeah. Uh, uh, because the things that go wrong in the last couple of games is those passes going through the middle. We need to look the wings. If we attack, we need to look... We need to search for the wings. And that's basically what you just mentioned. Choices, choices uh, in the build-up, and feel... Taylor and Berghaus were making so many mistakes in, from the, uh, in that aspect. That needs to change. And if they look more uh, uh, to Bergwijn or Kudus, who are technically so good, they have depth, they have speed. If they look for these kind of players, I think we can be, we can be really good. You know what's funny about Taylor, by the way? Just quickly, uh, I know a lot of comments. I'm seeing a lot of comments coming in, but the thing with Taylor is. Uh, and maybe I'm off, this is my like uh, observation, is that he has so much time, like yesterday, Twente went back a couple of times, like our, our CBs, and also Taylor had so much time on the ball, but it was difficult to find a solution. And I think he's struggling more, Taylor's struggling more than that. But if you give Taylor the ball and he has players around him and he has to make quick decisions, he's better at that than when he has time on the ball, which is strange, it's the other way around, yeah. but because he's an instinctive player. That's why I opted for Berghaus besides him. So we have yeah. that extra option uh, next to him. He can flourish 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Puppy. Yeah, no, I, I mean, just a comment on what you guys are saying. I feel like Taylor on the CDM role is a double-edged sword. I feel like on the ball, he's amazing. And he can do good things. And that's the whole reason he's standing there. But he's also bringing a liability with him. And that's his defensive work. Uh, yeah. See how easy he got his yellow card against 20 yesterday, you know. Um the, the guy was gone, basically. And um, I guess you know, in Berlin, you cannot afford those kind of mistakes. So it's a double-edged sword. We want more football because we didn't bring in the right players. Yeah. But now we're putting a player on a position that's not his. And actually, if you look at defensively and off the ball, he's not of the level what it should be. So it's only a hard comfort, question. Yeah, the only comfort quickly, uh, I just, is that uh, I am thinking a little bit the same as you, Papi Mento, but I have something like, if there's one coach that knows Taylor very good, I think it's, it's high. High. and there's a reason why he's trying him out and giving him confidence in that position. Still so right. let's see, let's see if he can grow into that. Let me continue yeah, with uh, the comments. I, mean, I just wanted to react. I wanted with to, to uh, touch upon this some uh, briefly. Um, mm -hmm. If you play with Taylor and Berghuis uh, as a double pivot, I understand. I think that's um, like a great option, but. With Berghuis, he's playing well if he's playing up the field, you know. Uh, the last games under Schroeder, you saw he was a little bit sloppy, maybe also with his personal conditions going on, with, with the threats and stuff uh, towards his family. But also in the last games, you saw that in the final third and up the field, he's playing very well. But every game up until now, he has those little slip-ups in that position as an eight next to the six that he loses the ball or fumbles it. And you saw it again also in the last game against Twente. Sometimes that he tried to receive the ball, but he hadn't uh, like a good touch. And then he had to track back and we were in a difficult position. So um, Berghuis isn't like 100% uh, great on that position still, also mainly defensively. So he yeah. has like a little bit of a Frank de Boertje, but then... Uh, but then, like mid in the midfield, you know, like he had yeah. when he played in the back. Yeah, so the nice I'm a little thing. bit concerned against Union Berlin mm -hmm. um, that he maybe can have that too on that position. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the good thing, the other way around, is that we're seeing that he's switching up with Kudus on the right wing position. So that's working out very well, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, Puppy. Yeah, Luca Mering, thanks for the comment. Uh, this is uh, directly at IJAX. Uh, we he now needs to get rid with the fresh, fresh. wind butterfly fresh wind butterfly effect. I believe our wing backs are very poor. I certainly have some compassion with Timber. 
Yeah, I, I heard you saying that as well, Juan. Maybe you want to take this because you were critical also. No, 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 no. Luca is asking this to Ajax and I just look oh, sharp. Ajax, so can Ajax, you can you please put the question back on the on the screen? Yeah. I will set the clock. Uh, I will yeah, set I the think, clock. I, th I think maybe maybe he um, means that with a butterfly effect, you know, when when a stone gets in the water, it ripples, you know, it gets bigger. Uh, but yeah, maybe he 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 yeah, maybe we need to ask him what he means. Maybe he means like that we need to see through uh, the fresh wind, the fresh breath of uh, the fresh breath he brings within the team, and also see the negative things that are going on. And I think he doesn't believe that the wing backs are at a certain quality, and that can maybe show during the next matches that it's not all peaches, you know. That, okay. that we still have to be credible, uh, critical on that. That's what I think he means, but I'm not I'm not sure. All right. let, let me just say this, because when they're saying wing backs, I'm always like, okay, who do you mean? Are you talking about Weindal is not of the quality of Ajax? But if we're talking about Rensch, look, Mazrawi also took a while before he got familiar with that back position and got better. So for me, for a youngster like Rensch, I would always give him more time. Uh, but yes, I do expect him to get better, especially in the final third. I think we were discussing his pass to Tadic. That should have been an easy one yesterday. yesterday but yeah. uh, he, he overshot that pass. And um, yeah, of course, I get frustrated with that. But I think with Rensch, I think we need to be more careful, yeah. especially looking at his age. And, and if you just look at the pool of players that we have that can play as wingbacks... Hato no. isn't ready there uh, yet because he's 16 years old. Those choices for Weindal at left and for uh, Ranch at the right are the best choices you can make with the pool of players you have. So maybe they are not world class and they are definitely not a Taklia Figo and a Masrawi, but they are better than, for example, Bessie and Sanchez on the wing. So we just have to cope definitely. with it and hope they will grow within the team and that will that it starts gelling and clicking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going back, going back to uh, Van der Sar, he said two things in the interview, which I took also as maybe this is a test case for a lot of players as well till the end of the season, because he said it's up to the players now to prove themselves. That's one thing. And the second thing that he said maybe two or three times during that interview is that at the end of the, at the end of the season, the scores are settled, not only for Ajax, but also how they perform as, as a club, the players, etc. So everybody is going to be evaluated, assessed at the end of the season, including the players. Sport, sportive, uh, like like the sports is going to be evaluated. But yeah. when the board of directors get together in March with this new guy coming in, you know, I, I forgot yeah. his name. Sahbi knows his name. Pir, 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 yeah, Pir, yeah. Pir Ericha. Um, it could have already be an assess, assessment then, you know, in March. So for, for him, for Van der Sar, it could be already do or die maybe earlier. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, okay. Tomasak, thanks for the comment, buddy. Uh, do you think Taylor should be benched? No, I think we covered this. We're missing a lot of football, uh, especially in the back line. So, actually, his position in the CDM role is being critical. Yeah, we should uh, give we him We're winning, bro. We're winning. We're winning. Never exactly. change it to yeah. the winning, uh, winning team. Exactly. Yeah, and we but should give him It doesn't have our preference, right? It doesn't have our preference. No, no, no I mean, yeah, but. I said, but, but, I said we should give him time because yeah, I believe yeah, we're hanging it too. And the, the, the main yeah. reason to do this is because if we keep playing Alfred as a central defender, somebody has to take the pivot role on the six. It isn't his natural position because Taylor is more of an eight also. So if yeah. he plays that six, it's not his natural role. So yes, we need to give him time. And yes, he is not the player like an Alvarez because he's a total different player with a different skill set. So he needs to develop that skill set for that role. It's as easy as that because who else you play? Nobody is a natural at that position, maybe except for Grealitz who's injured. So yeah. whoever plays there needs to learn. Or you can argue maybe it's time because I've read that's this as well. Uh, some people are thinking maybe give this gym a little bit more time to play there. Nah, not ready yet. Okay. All right. Physically clear. physically not ready yet. Can you oh, imagine yeah. uh, Fitz Jim playing against like strong adult professionals in Europe, you know, like he will get overrun at that midfield. But it would be very it would be very typical of Ajax to do that. Yeah. I yeah, hope, but it I would also be very uh, typical to get compete. dominated on the midfield because you choose choose for that kind of player. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, honestly. I don't know about that. No. Uh, but, 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 maybe, but maybe it's not ready, like Sahbi said. 
Yep. Uh, next question, uh, next comment. Kasa, thank you. Is Broby going to be a six success story at Ajax? He has been okay. Yeah, I want to give it to Sahbi, but before Sahbi comments, also from the interview, which was with Van der Sar, very interesting. Uh, Van Basta was very critical about Ajax getting Broby back for that amount of money and looking at this season that basically you're paying, I don't know, up to 20 million for the player and yeah, still struggling, still not being, you know, the, uh, how do you call it, like um, uh, a player up front that uh, is not questionable, you know, that's the problem. So what's your view on this, uh, Sahbi, in general? Broby. Yeah, it's difficult to say. I mean, uh, Broby, when he came back, I mean, I, I love him as a as a person, also the way he plays. But if you're still not fit for so, for, and you play for so many years, and you can't play 90 minutes because that's what is told, it's it, it's strange. And he scored, uh, I think, 10 goals or uh, something like that. So he did well, but he scored them against not the greatest opponents but on the other hand he scored in a, in in the era of Schroeder, which is quite, quite then it's a quite good result if he scores so many in in a, in, in a Schroeder uh, era so basically basically he earned some brownie points for you he earns it but he needs to do more he needs to do more uh, i mean 20 million is a lot normally you would get an end product product for 20 million he still considered almost a youth product uh, um uh, 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 because he came from a youth academy, but he still needs to. He needs to do that, more. That, he needs to do more. Is that that's a good point? And I'm going to give Ajax a moment to react because I saw him nod his head. Um, do you see Broby as still a youth player, Sahbi? Well, I, I mean, he, he, I don't see him as a youth player because he's literally not a youth player he anymore. Played. He but played with he came Ajax. from the youth academy, and he. He, he, he played he, with Young Ajax this week. Don't forget, earlier this week he played with Young Ajax. Yeah, because of his age, indeed. But yeah. if you look at the amount of uh, money that uh, has been paid for him, you should not consider him a youth player. Mm -hmm. But all with all, he comes from uh, from the youth, and twenty million is a lot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Ajax, go ahead. So let me talk some sense into the situation here, because uh, for me, ten goals. And almost being the top scorer in the Eredivisie, and I think if you look up the amount of goals and minutes that he needs for uh, for those goals to score, I think you will be, yeah, I think you will be surprised there. And under Schroeder, it's difficult to to perform if he keeps playing like Kudus as a striker and not giving him the full chance. And I agree. What I do agree on with Sahbi is his level of fitness, but the level of fitness. Also, you can build upon that if you get played a lot and that you, until you're so fatigued that you need to be substituted. But he's not being played as a first 11 player most of the season. Okay. Occasionally, a match here and there. And okay, still, okay. He, has at, he is at 10 goals. Mm -hmm. All right. And, I so, and, and the, the, the reason I was nodding was in now, nowadays, you do not have to expect to get an end product for 20 million. The market has changed. So it isn't it isn't something um, like in the past a decade ago that if you spend that much money that is a sure deal because the twenty million now is a ten million like a decade ago okay. things have evolved so well, we need to, we need to stop uh, blaming a player uh, like that that is so young that he's twenty million that was the oh. choice of the club the club made that choice but he isn't being used and utilized optimal. Okay. It's in and out, in and out, uh, occasional minutes here. And also in the last match, he scored twice. In what right. time frame? That's true. 20 minutes? Can I, yeah, minutes? Yeah, can, I, can, I, can I say something about this? Because I agree with you partially. And the other hand, and I'm going to give this question to both of you, Sahabi and Ajax. Let's look at the whole situation. The big match is this season with Schroeder. He opted for Kudus as a striker and not Brogi. Yes. If you look what Hatech is doing now, he's opting for Tadic as a striker and not Broby. So, look, we have two different coaches, and two different coaches rather opt for players that are not naturally a striker above Broby. Yeah, I mean, but... No, 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 you can argue against it, but it tells you a, a small story or a little story a fact, towards it. Yeah, but but yeah. but Juan, I do not know, and I do not do this a lot, but I do not know how to translate it in English. But Broby, and I was going to say it in Dutch, is, he is the kind of the reckoning. 
because you know maybe you can translate it he's the one that's has he has to suffer yeah. the consequences for certain choices because the coach knows and that's sensible by by Heitinga, the coach knows that he cannot play Tadic as a winger anymore he does not want to skip the captain so he's playing in the only role that at this point he can deliver a lot for the team still and that is the striker position playing Tadic means that you have to bench Brobby so you're Same saying thing, and and going back to the Schroeder era you said uh, he chose for Kudus but there was so much things fundamentally wrong with the ship that I access under Schroeder there were water coming out of all holes you know of the ship everywhere and the striker position was this one thing the team wasn't clicking at all yeah but he I made did. great choices at every position so now if you play Tadic it's logical that Robbie gets benched Ajax you're saying basically okay Schroeder it's very easy to dismiss that argument but I'm trying yeah. to make an argument together with Heitinga and Heitinga let's be honest about this Heitinga seems like a guy who doesn't care who you are he will make the right choice for the team that's not what I want to Tadic, say. Bro. Not we just Tadic, talked bro. about this earlier. No, no, no. You're not questioning that. Basically. That's what you're saying. You're questioning that and you think no, that... He's, I'm no, I'm saying wait, he's smart. Wait a minute. He's smart. Wait a minute. No. Let me finish this sentence. I'm with Juan on this. What yeah. you're saying is that you're you're uh, hesitating on Heitinga making the right decision for the team and maybe having slight preferences above Broby. That's what you're saying. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is Heitinga is the smart guy. He knows what the role of Tadic is within the squad. Even Berghuis stated recently, Tadic is the best captain that I've ever played with. His role within Ajax, within the team chemistry, within the club, should not be underestimated. So the first thing Heitinga does is his captain, the one with the most influence within the team that can get the heads towards the same position with other players, his like hand within the field if he's, if he's on the bench, you know, he plays him. He wants him on board. And it's he broken. realizes that his best position in at his age, at the stage of his career, is at the striker position. So he can play Bergwijn and another player on the right wing position. So it's actually smart. But like I said, the consequences are for Broby. If Tadic was, would not be at the club and had the stature that he has, Broby would play it for sure. 100%. I find this uh, to be actually a, a nice insight also. Exactly. I, I do agree and that. Kudus on the wing, the use of Broby is far lower. Tadis yeah. fits better than Broby has great potential and he will succeed. But yeah, that's also a question. Like if you had like a Ziyech type uh, winger, uh, a Broby would be the better fit. But because you have already two speedy wingers, maybe the one that's a target man and, and, and a false nine would fit better in the team. All right, Sabi, do you want to react to this still, or can we go to the next? Uh, no, no, I mean you you stated you you stated already. I agree with you, uh, Juan, on this. Uh, okay, so nothing to add. We're um, uh, we're past seven minutes, eight minutes past the one hour mark. So just a few more questions, and then uh, we have to we have to call it, uh, guys. So let's Actually, go. Actually, uh, we're gonna call it. I just saw one fun one. I don't know who Minorian Rayola's brother looks like, but yeah, apparently, and, uh, apparently I... he looks like you, right? Yeah, probably you mean like glasses. It. I'll, I'll take it. It's fine. If I, I have saw, to, I saw that comment. We'll somebody was saying like Papimento is looking like a younger Mino Rayola. <laughs> a younger or a younger <laughs> brother? I do have to share no, a secret, though. I do have to share a secret. Uh, Papimento likes pizza a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I do like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest about that. Yeah, um, you you could know that, right? I know. And I know for a fact, actually. Yeah. Let's just finish it. There's too many comments to go through, uh, Juan. Um, but maybe the there's still, maybe there are some still good questions uh, out there. Yeah, you. Oh, what about you, uh, it's, 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 prediction I time, guys? Prediction to, time. To, prediction to, time. To with you, I see a lot of agree with Ajax here. I will scroll past that. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> uh, Papi Mento is is on purpose not uh, showing that. No, but let me check. Maybe there's a good question still. Yeah, just try to talk to the mic, uh, Ajax. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> guys, I'm I'm trying to make the most of it, you know, on my phone. So I'm helping Poppy out here. Um, yeah. So anything? No, but what no about, not what really. It's more. Uh, yeah, they're people are asking what, what happened to Nasi Unifor. I see a lot of people asking about Unifor. I think he's still at what? What is it? Trapson? Yeah. Trapson yeah. Sport. 
I, yeah, I saw on his Insta, I believe, that he scored like um, not too long ago. So hopefully he's doing something right there. But I'm being honest, uh, the football in, in Turkey, or I cannot pronounce it anymore, Turkey or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do not watch it, so I cannot tell too much about it. But uh, hopefully he's getting a lot of minutes. Maybe Sahbi knows a little bit more about Turkish yeah. football. Haven't watched it. Uh, haven't watched it a lot, but I I do know that he scored his first league goal, uh, not so long ago. So yeah, I mean he's doing he's doing well, but still a bench player, uh, yeah. not not a typical uh, starter uh, yet. I would say I would say um, I haven't been following him a lot either. But if you guys want, uh, let us know in the comments uh, after the video. Let us know in the comments if you guys would like us to invite Trapson Sport fans, which we did before, uh, I think. And maybe we can have yeah, we you know, a talk about them. We'll invite them to a live stream and they can maybe uh, tell us a little bit more about how he's doing so far this season. If you guys want that, let us know in the comment below. Um, I think this is it for now. Uh, guys, we have Erkase first home game. So that's going to be special. Uh, yeah, it's going to be nice. And next week, guys, we have a game on Thursday. So it's a big game against Union. Uh, on Friday, we'll be back with the live stream again. Uh, thank you all. Please like subscribe and we'll see you guys soon and enjoy the ride guys enjoy the ride we're back